Corrections Corporation of America in a $250 million proposal sent to prison officials in 48 states across the nation. The deal works like this. States sell their prisons off to the Corrections Corporation of America, also known as CCA, a multi-billion dollar for-profit corporation that's already operating 66 prison facilities across the nation. CCA pays the state a lump sum off the bat for the prison. For example, in Ohio, CCA paid the state $72 million to take over the Lake Erie Correctional Institution. From that point on, the state will then pay CCA uh, just a couple million dollars a year to manage the facility, which the state paid to build and CCA had just bought for a song. That sort of sounds like a crummy deal, but CCA and proponents of prison privatization argue that this deal is actually going to save states a bunch of money. Unfortunately, that's not true. As a recent study out of Arizona by the Tucson Citizen shows, selling off public prisons to for-profit corporations actually cost the taxpayers of Arizona an extra $3.5 million a year. Although with the initial privatization sale of the prison, Republican Governor Jan Brewer did get a few million bucks that she could use to make it seem like her budget was balanced, and then future generations are going to have to pay it back. So it's a crummy deal. Not only that, for-profit prison corporations like CCA haven't proven themselves to be any better at running prisons than state governments. It's just, it's just like charter schools haven't demonstrated. In fact, by and large, you look at all the studies on charter schools versus public schools, public schools always beat charter schools. Same with the, the same thing with privatized prisons. These are, this is the commons. This is stuff that should not be privatized. For example, in Idaho, CCA's prison facilities saw more violence than the nearby state-run prison. Between 2007 and 2008, there were 42 recorded assaults at the state-run Idaho State Correctional Institution. During that same period, at CCA's Idaho Correctional Center, there were a whopping 132 recorded assaults. It's like three or four times more. So not only is CCA overcharging taxpayers for their services, which is one reason why CCA's CEO, Damon Hinninger, made more than $3 million bucks last year, but CCA prisons are far more violent as well. Which makes you wonder why mostly Republican state lawmakers and governors would fall for this pitch. The answer? Money. A lot of money. In the last 10 years, CCA has spent more than $17 million lobbying for lucrative prison contracts and tougher laws to throw more people in prison. Also in the last 10 years, CCA has given nearly $2 million to various political candidates. So that explains that. But there's a much darker side to this prison privatization plan than just crony capitalism and wasting taxpayer dollars. It's predatory capitalism as well. As part of CCA's deal to buy public prisons, the state has to promise to keep those prisons at least 90% filled for 20 years. Our states have to promise to lock up as many people as the corporation demands. Even if crime is down. Even if there are fewer robberies or drug crimes or if, you know, heaven... Just imagine if they were to decriminalize pot or something. Assaults are down. No matter what, the prison population still has to remain. They, they still have to have 90% occupancy for 20 years. That's the deal. Since CCA turns a profit off each inmate, they need to make sure there are a lot of citizens locked up. So let's think about what's happening here. By handing off our prisons to the private market, to the so-called so corporate free market, we've suddenly injected the profit motive into our criminal justice system. So it's no longer about keeping Americans safe from crime. It's no longer about Americans who might mess up getting a second chance or saving them from undue punishment or giving them punishment that's appropriate to the crime. It's now strictly about making a buck. That's why CCA has lobbied for stricter drug laws and stricter anti-immigration laws. Those laws don't make us any safer. But they do lead to more people being thrown in prison and thus more profits for corporations like CCA. We have state and local police forces now preying on the citizens they are supposed to serve and protect just because a contract with a for-profit prison corporation requires them to do so. They've got to keep 90% occupancy in that prison because that's the contract that the state signed. This is predatory capitalism. And it's important, it's, 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 it, this shows how important the commons is and why the commons should be in the hands of we the people through our elected officials, through this thing we call government, rather than private corporations. Historically, prisons have belonged to we the people. They belong to the commons. They've been administered by our democratic republic, our government. 
They haven't been run by corporations like CCA that were unaccountable to we the people and only focused on profits. It's plain and simple. When it comes to things that deal with human beings, that deal with human lives, that deal with life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, the profit motive should not be number one like the free market, the corporate free market dictates at all. In fact, the profit motive shouldn't be a motive at all. Motive number one should be the good of our society and the good of the people. It's time to reclaim the commons. Frankly, I think we should be passing laws in various states around the country that says it's illegal to run a school or a prison or a hospital on a for-profit basis. Seriously. It used to be. It used to be that insurance companies had to be not-for-profit. It used to be that hospitals had to be not-for-profit. It used to be that schools had to be not-for-profit. It was the only way they could incorporate. And it used to be that nobody even imagined running prisons as, as a device so that they could, you know, generate dividends to give to stockholders so that they, you know, Paris Hilton could own, hold some stock in this thing and earn her, her dividends and pay a maximum 15% income tax on it. I mean, nobody ever even imagined this. So anyway, my private prison rant, I wanted to share it with you. It's uh, thought for the day. <laughs>